we had been uh, discussing filters uh, different topologies we have discussed the second order uh, universal filter that is the second order uh, topology that gives you both band pass and low pass transfer functions using op amps right essentially what you do is you have uh, two uh, integrators and the two integrators essentially emulate what uh, the they emulate the vi relationships of a capacitor and an inductor in a second order filter that's how we started off right of course once you have the topology you can forget the second order filter altogether and once you derive the transfer functions you can also do more things with it by applying inputs to different places through either capacitors or inductors you can get different types of transfer functions and by applying inputs to multiple places you can get all types like including the notch filter and so on okay so that uh, the op amp uh, rc filter or active rc filter i think you understand now uh, to some extent also discussed a filter using uh, just voltage control current sources that's known as a gmc filter this is also used but this because you don't have stand alone gms available as easily as you have stand alone op amps available uh, with discrete components you normally wouldn't do this but when you design filters on an integrated circuit you would use things like this and again the idea is exactly the same we start off with the equations of a second order filter and did that but you could you don't have to do that you can start off with any transfer function and go to the same thing okay so we have vi and we can just call this gm1 vi this current is driven into a capacitor c1 if i call this v1 so let me call this gmi to stand for the input and if i call this gm21 takes you from node 1 to node 2 we have capacitor c2 and v2 right now we just have two integrators one after another right gm loaded by a capacitor is an integrator right and this is another integrator what we need for a filter is feedback essentially we need this i will call this gm12 times v2 so the second integrator's output voltage influences the current in the first integrator okay essentially this is exactly what happens when you have an inductor and a capacitor in parallel you have the state variable here vc and you have the state variable il okay so vc influences il il is the integral of vc and il influences vc because that's the same as the capacitor current and the two affect each other that's how you get resonance and right now whatever i have drawn here is equivalent to a lossless uh, filter it's useless because it's uh, poles around the imaginary axis and it's unstable so what you also need is a resistor i will call this gm11 and when you are using voltage control current sources you can implement that by if this is v1 this should be controlled by v1 itself so that this is equivalent to a resistor or is equivalent to a resistor value 1 by gm11 or a conductance of value gm11 okay so this is a second order filter and we also saw that this particular block here this is known as a gyrator okay and its property is that oh i think i messed up the polarity which should be the other way around okay that's important so that should be pointing downwards what a gyrator does is to simply invert the vi relationship okay 
you have v1 here gm21 times v1 flows that way and let's say it flows into an impedance z what will be the voltage at this node across z what is it gm21 times z times v1 okay and what is the current here that times gm12 so gm12 gm21 z times v1 okay so clearly between this terminal and ground it looks like an admittance gm12 gm21 times z okay essentially whatever impedance you connect here becomes the admittance on this side and vice versa so that's why if you connect a capacitor it because it looks like an inductor this is okay so that's what a generator is and then you can also terminate it with more complicated stuff we already discussed that if you have a capacitor and in resistor in parallel it will look like a resistor and inductor in series okay so that becomes y and so on so that's a useful block that's also used many times in what is known as active filter design okay any questions on any of these filters so if you now think of this whole thing as an inductor you will see that what you have is actually rc l and parallel with each other okay parallel resonant circuit so that's what you try to emulate it, okay so in one way or the other when you realize higher order filters that's what you are emulating okay and there are other uh, filter structures which are not derived as systematically but their virtue is that uh, you can get a higher order filter with a single op amp okay i think the tutorial had one of the examples right but anyway i'll show you one this is a this is an amplifier of gain k okay and this gain k we know how to realize using an op amp okay so if we have so this is vi this is vo and this is vx the input to this is vx this will be k times vx okay what is the order of the transfer function v not by vi what will it be ha huh? second order you have two capacitors so you do expect second order please evaluate the transfer function was this in the tutorial so uh, you can do it in any way but uh, just a quick hint if i call this uh, if i call this voltage v not the output voltage what will be this voltage at the input v not by k and what will be this voltage the voltage at this node what is this block just this block by itself ha huh? this by itself what is it first order rc low pass so what is vp by va 1 by s so what is this voltage now what is it 1 plus c2 r2 times v not by k okay so now it should be easier what is the current flowing in r2 what is the current flowing in r2 v not by k times sc2 it's the current flowing in the capacitor right so 
I mean you can do it in any way you want now all you have to do is to write Kirchhoff's current law here and you should get the transfer function v naught by v i please do that. Current in R 1 how much is that v i minus 1 plus s c 2 r 2 v naught by k divided by r 1 and that should be equal to the current through c 1 which is the voltage across it right this times s c 1 plus the current through this Okay, I think some of you had uh, some of missed this term, so you will not get k in the denominator in that case. Okay. So if you simplify this and write v naught by v i, you should get what is the answer? What's the DC gain? K. Does it make sense? Obviously, if the capacitors are open, you just have v i being applied to an amplifier with gain k. So, the DC gain should be k and what is the coefficient of S square C 1 C 2 R 1 R 2 what is the coefficient of S huh? R 1 C 2 R 2 C 2 R 1 C 1 yeah 1 minus k ok plus 1 ok and if you choose uh, R 1 C 1 equals R 2 C 2 what will you get? Ok, this is fine. I mean I am not saying this is the best choice, I am just showing you what happens. So, this is some transfer function, you can evaluate it now you huh? oh yeah sorry not just uh, the time constants what I meant is uh, R 1 equals R 2 ok fine. So, the two resistors are equal and capacitors are equal this is what you get, but I mean I am not saying this is the best choice you can use other choices also. What I want to just highlight is the role of uh, the active circuit here. The active circuit is providing the gain k, right. So, if you look at this middle term, if you write it in the standard form, the second order of stuff, you will have s square by omega n square plus s by q omega n plus 1, ok. So, first of all, if k is 0, what does it mean? There is no amplifier at all, right? You just have uh, nothing there. I mean, then this term will be maximum positive, and as k increases, this becomes smaller and smaller. So it increases the quality factor. Okay? I think you already know that if you don't have control sources, if you have only Rs and Cs, what is the maximum quality factor you can get for the poles? Or what can you say if you have only R's and C's in a network? What can you say about the poles of that system? Nothing. They'll always be real. Okay. Similarly, if you have only R and L, it'll all be real. You need both L and C to get complex conjugate roots. Okay. So if you have only real poles, what can you say about uh, the quality factor of any pole pair? Huh? One it will never reach what? No. Will it reach 1? Will it reach 0 0.99? For a second order case, what is the constraint on zeta to have only real poles? Uh, is the constraint on zeta or what is the constraint on q? Zeta has to be more than 1? No, no, no. Quality factor has to be less than half or uh, the damping factor has to be more than 1. Okay that 1 over square root 2 is for peaking in the frequency uh, domain right. So, essentially you will never get a q more than half 
for any pole pair if you have only real pole. But in this case what is happening is the active circuits gain is reducing this term. In fact, you can get Q of infinity also. If you choose equal resistors and equal capacitors and make K equals 3, it becomes an oscillator. Okay? So, that is what the active filter is doing and there are many other uh, filters also. Uh, the main advantage of this, this is not a great filter, it has many disadvantages compared to the 3 op amp structure that we discussed. The advantage is with a single op amp you can get a second order filter. So, when you are making discrete component uh, circuits that may be of some advantage. Okay? And there are other things whose uh, transfer functions you can evaluate yourself and there is like a zillion of these if you happen to go to some books like the one by Sergio Franco with the title of something like op amps or op amp circuits, you will see lots and lots of circuits. Okay? There is also another circuit. You can evaluate the transfer functions yourselves and then see what comes out. Okay? Any questions here? So, this is another second order filter. Uh, by the way, just to give you some terminology, this is known as silent key filter after the first people who I guess wrote a paper describing this. And this is known as a Rauch. There are lots of filter topologies and you can even once you understand the principle you can invent one yourself. The main thing is I mean if uh, to say one filter is better than another you have to evaluate all the relevant parameters and these days the relevant ones are the distortion and noise and so on. So, we will not deal with them in this course, but whenever you design them that is what you will have to see. Okay? Any questions about any aspects of active filters? Uh, with one op amp you can get a second order filter also. I mean these are known as single op amp uh, filters that is the advantage that is you use when you are making discrete component circuits the cost is usually related to the number of components you use number of op amps you use. So, if you can get a higher order filter using a single op amp it is better. DC gain will be limited. First of all, uh, let us not uh, for now assume that the DC gain of the filter itself is not you do not necessarily want a gain of 100 from the filter itself. If you want, you can place an amplifier after that. Okay? So, that is one thing. Then I also chose the capacitors and resistors to be identical. You could choose them differently, then you will get a slightly different answer. But you cannot, I mean, I do not think you can make a, a filter with a gain of 100 uh, using this, it will probably have many other undesirable characteristics also. I think in the one of the tutorials you in the last tutorial one of the questions was to analyze the filter, but not by assuming that the op amp is ideal, but by assuming it is an integrator. What did you see in that case? What was the conclusion or were you able to conclude anything? No? Okay, we can discuss that in class. Uh, that is what limits like how much gain you can get and so on. Okay? Because this transfer function also uh, this is now an ideal second order transfer function and in principle by adjusting the values of R's and C's you can get anything you want. Okay? And uh, the, as is the case with this, but once the op amp itself has its own frequency limitation, its uh, model is not the ideal infinite gain model, but omega u by s 
you will find that uh, some of these things become worse ok. I mean in what way worse we have to see, but there is one particular feature that is kind of common to all filters that we can discuss ok. Any questions here? So, let us uh, yeah let us go to that uh, problem in the tutorial and see exactly what happens. First let me consider a single integrator ok and we know that V naught by V i is minus 1 by C r. Actually, let me do this. Let me just have an ideal minus 1 simply to avoid the minus sign here, that is all ok. So, this V naught by V i is 1 by C r with an ideal op amp ok. Now, if the op amps transfer function is omega u by s, what will be this transfer function? Do you have it worked out from the tutorial? What will be v naught by v i? How will you solve this? Essentially, this voltage will no longer be 0, that is what you assume to get this transfer function. So, now this voltage will be how much for the op amps relationship to be satisfied it is s by omega u times v naught ok. By the way this is minus v naught here right and for the feedback structures relationship to be satisfied what is it? This v e if I call it v e or v x v e is s by omega u times v naught and you also have the potential divider. Now, of course, the potential divider consists of a resistor and a capacitor. So, it will be what V i by R minus V naught times S c by 1 by R plus S c ok. This I think you know right. I mean if you have a number of uh, voltage is being summed, what will be the resulting voltage? I mean let me not even use resistors, let me say impedances what will be the voltage? Yeah, so it is basically the easiest thing is to convert each of these series combinations into Norton ok. So, it will become a current source of value v 1 y 1 where y 1 is 1 by z 1 in parallel with z 1 ok and these things all add together all these current sources add together right because they are connected to the same nodes. So, the sum voltage will be v 1 y 1 plus v 2 y 2 v n y n. So, that you can think of as the sum of all Norton currents divided by the sum of all admittances because they are all in parallel ok. And you can also hang another uh, impedance here z naught, how will the result change? What will happen if I if I did not have this is this is the expression do you agree? each branch I converted to yeah, you do not have to do that, but the easiest thing is to visualize is if you convert each of these v and z in series to a current source and z in parallel, then all the current sources are in parallel. So, the current values simply add up 
that is the numerator here v1 y1 plus v2 y2 and so on and all the impedances are in parallel. So, their admittances add up. So, that is y1 plus y2 and so on. So, that is the ratio okay. that is the voltage. Now, if I have one more impedance here z0 what happens to this expression? The denominator simply has plus y0 that is all. Okay. So, this is something worthwhile remembering I mean many cases you encounter uh, essentially a star connection with voltage sources on every branch or some branches then you can find out what the resulting voltage is and that is exactly what I did it is basically a glorified voltage divided formula right. So, V i times the conductance attached to it 1 by r minus V naught times the admittance attached to it that is S c divided by the sum of admittances 1 by r plus S c okay. and from this you can solve what is it that you get please solve for V naught by V i. Firstly what is the expression you get? 1 by S r 1 plus S by omega u plus omega u C r. Okay. Now, like I said omega u is the unity gain frequency of the op amp, 1 by C r is the unity gain frequency of the integrator you are trying to realize. Okay. So, it just makes sense that you have to choose omega u to be much greater than 1 by C r right. This is exactly like if you want to try to make an amplifier of gain 10, what is the gain of the op amp you would have? Much more than 10 right. If you have an op amp of gain 20, it is probably not going to work in any precise way. Similarly, here also the op amp itself is an integrator, but the integrator you are trying to realize had better have much smaller unity gain frequency, so that anything works at all. Okay. And of course, for algebra the simplification is that we just neglect this term. Okay. So, now uh, the transfer function of an integrator you have a you have the ideal part which basically has a pole at the origin 1 by C r and an extra pole at the unity gain frequency of the op amp you understand. So, an integrator itself what you think of an integrator has two poles one pole at the origin another at the unity gain frequency of the op amp. Okay. So, what will that do? So, ideally 1 by S c r would be a single line of uh, minus 20 dB per decade and the phase would be minus 90 degrees throughout. Okay. Now, in presence of this we are also assuming that omega u is much more than 1 by C r. So, we have an extra pole here at omega u. So, what happens is it kind of follows this that. Okay. So, this is what reality is and this phase also it actually goes more negative uh, than minus 90 degrees here it becomes minus 135 and eventually it will settle to minus 180 degrees. Okay. So, essentially the phase becomes more negative than uh, minus 90 degrees. So, that is the key takeaway here or you can think of it as in addition to every pole at the origin you will also have an additional pole at 1 by omega u. Okay. So, this part like I said uh, you need to think quite a bit to figure out what is happening. Now, uh, we were using integrators to emulate the V i relationships of capacitors and inductors right. We started with a passive filter which has L and C and we came up with this active circuit which has just two integrators. What were the integrators doing? Essentially they were emulating the current voltage relationship of a capacitor and an inductor. Okay. So, let me take an inductor. We know that 
the inductor current is the integral of the inductor voltage okay so now uh, let's see how to best show this are you familiar with uh, some properties of uh, if you have only passive network that is rl and c only okay and you find the impedance or admittance it doesn't matter which what can you say about the phase of uh, such a system you have only passive elements in a box connected in any way and uh, you calculate the impedance over all frequencies z of j omega so do you know something about this what what's that fantastic so real part of z of is positive does it make sense i mean does it sound reasonable yeah yeah non negative that is fine does this make uh, sense why yeah there must be there cannot be generation for sure so if you have v and current which is y times v the admittance times v the same thing applies for y also what is the power dissipated in this i square r <laughs> as a formula right when you have complex quantities what is it real part of uh, v times the conjugate of i okay so which is real part of v times the conjugate of v conjugate of y okay and what is this actually it is half right when you write it as phasors so so it is the magnitude squared of v divided by 2 times real part of y star and this has to be more than or equal to zero and this is of course always positive so the real part of y star has to be or which is the same as the real part of y has to be more than or zero and exactly the same holds for z also okay you can start with uh, v equals i times z and you will get the same result okay so what does it say about the phase of that impedance some confusion here so basically the real part of uh, if you have only rl and c the uh, real part of the impedance or real part of admittance has to be positive okay so what should be the phase angle it's between minus pi by 2 and plus pi by 2 okay so if you plot the phasor of the impedance i think you should have done that right in some problems where will that be a vector corresponding to the impedance where will that be first or fourth quadrant right because the real part is always positive okay so now okay so the ideal inductor has uh this relationship its phase angle is minus 90 degrees okay so that means that it is passive right it doesn't have any real part at all isn't it the impedance of an inductor or the admittance of an inductor it has no uh real part that means it is lossless but the phase is exactly minus 90 degrees okay now the integrator that you used to emulate the relationship of an inductor as a phase angle more negative than minus 90 degrees okay so what can you add to the inductor to make the phase more negative than minus 90 degrees what did we say so far i mean about passive networks passive network cannot have this phase right 
passive network cannot have a phase more negative than minus 90 degrees or more positive than plus 90. So, just tell me I mean forget the forget the magnitude plot ok, just tell me how you will emulate this phase by adding something to the inductor, is it possible? Huh? We want the phase to look like this and I want it to be inductor plus something. So, it is some resistor basically, I mean it should be a negative resistor fantastic ok. So, if you have L and minus R, what will be the magnitude response? What will be the phase response? Huh? So, anyway, so this is actually a little complicated, I will also find other ways of uh, trying to explain that. Essentially, an integrator, if its phase is more negative than minus 90 at the unity gain frequency, it is like having negative loss, ok. So, that means that the quality factor of the circuit will actually go up, right. So, you have some loss in the circuit, you have that R p right R q or something that I called which is controlling the quality factor. In the two integrator filter, there was a resistor R q across one of the capacitors that was creating loss and controlling the value of q ok. So, now because the integrator has a finite unity gain frequency, it is like each integrator has a negative loss ok. So, this is quite difficult to appreciate and do not worry this is not the kind of problem that will appear in the exam. But, uh, the qualitative uh, consequence is that the quality factor of the circuit actually increases. I mean this is not necessarily a good thing I mean just because it increases ok, because in uh, particular cases it can even oscillate right. Quality factor increases means I mean you could have cases where it uh, rises to very high values or even infinity. So, that means that if you uh, if you make a second order filter and if your uh, op amps do not have a high enough unity gain frequency. Remember, if the unity gain frequency is very large, what will happen is that this point will occur somewhere there and the phase is very close to minus 90, it may be very slightly negative ok. That is like a very small amount of negative loss, but if the unity gain frequency of the integrate you know, if the op amp is small, then it is like having a large negative loss that means a large generation. So, if you use an op amp with an inadequate unity gain frequency in a filter, it can actually oscillate or at least give you undesirable transfer function ok. A transfer function that should uh, look like that could end up looking like that ok, that is not good either ok. So, that is what happens. So, we will continue this, we will not go too much into the detail, but at least qualitatively you should be able to understand the result. The main thing is if you associate this integrator with the impedance of a passive network the impedance of the passive network cannot go beyond plus minus I mean beyond the range minus 90 to plus 90 whereas this one is ok. So, that is a that is a signal that something non passive is happening that is there is some negative loss in the circuit. 